Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. Today we're doing another motherboard review and we're checking out the MSI X370 Gaming Pro Carbon. So let's jump right into it with the key features. So of course this supports all your AM4 Ryzen CPUs and overclocking like all X370 and B350 motherboards. Now memory wise you're going to be able to run dual channel DDR4 memory up to 64 gigabytes of it and up to 3200 megahertz that's really solid being an x370 you're also going to be able to run sli or crossfire gpus it does go down to by eight so, but that's fine you know, there's still plenty of bandwidth there as i showed in my b350 versus x370 video now as far as audio goes it's coming with the realtek alc 1220 codec with a built-in dac chemicon audio capacitors and separated audio layers that's going to be really solid there nice and clean and good audio now let's move over to the layout then and we'll work from top to bottom and take a tour of the motherboard. So up the top left there we see the 8 pin CPU power connector. Moving over a bit we have the 8 plus 2 power phase design VRNs with really nice heat sinks there. Then we have the CPU fan connector beside the RAM slots. Then we get a pump connector a system fan connector and an easy debug LED. Now I would have liked the codes, but you know, it's better than nothing, I suppose. Then you have your just standard uh, motherboard power connector and another system fan connector there. Moving more to the middle of the motherboard now, you see another fan connector above the PCI slots. So PCI slot wise, you're coming with uh, three PCIe 2.0 times one slots. Those are the little ones you see there. You get, of course, the two big guys, the two PCIe 3.0 times 16 slots. Though the big ones there with the steel reinforcements, those are the ones you're going to want to use with your graphics cards or card. Then you just get a single PCIe 2.0 times 16 slot down the bottom there. Now, as far as M.2s go, you have the uh, single uh, M.2 PCIe 3.0 times 4 slot, and you also get the lower one there, the PCIe 2.0 times 4 M.2 slot. So that's quite interesting. Now, moving back over to the right, we see a USB 3.1 Gen 1 port and four SATA 6 ports. Down the bottom, we have two more SATA 6 ports alongside another USB 3.1 Gen 1 port. Then we just have two standard USB 2.0 connectors, the front panel connections, then just some LED connections, another fan connector there, and your front panel audio connector. Now let's go around to the back then and check out the rear I.O. And we'll work from left to right. So on the left there we see the PS2 port above two USB 2.0 ports, a DVI-D port that's going to be for all the guys running uh, APUs. Then you get two USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A ports above an HDMI port, an RJ45 LAN port above two more USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A ports. Then you get your USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A and C port, so that's good to see. And then all your standard audio connections there, which are gold-plated, so that's really nice. With that being said, let's talk about the BIOS. So updating the BIOS can be done through M-Flash. It's very straightforward and very easy. The BIOS itself, to me, is easy to use. Uh, however, I think newer users might find it a little bit difficult at times. But personally, for uh, me and I, I guess enthusiasts as well, would we'll probably find it very straightforward. Now, I have been reading that some people have been having issues with MSI's biases. Uh, they are a little bit funny. I think they're really getting on top of it now. So from here on out, I think it'll only get better and better. But I would definitely recommend updating the BIOS straight away as soon as you get this motherboard. Nevertheless, as far as overclocking goes, it was just fine. Uh, with the Ryzen 7 1700, I managed 4 gigahertz easily, you know, no worries at all with RAM sitting at 2933 megahertz, and that was just fine, and that's typical for any Ryzen CPU, with a good motherboard, that is. Which leads us nicely into the conclusion, and we need to bring price into the equation. So right now, you can pick up this MSI X370 Gaming Pro Carbon for 349 New Zealand dollars over at playtech.co.nz which I think is a pretty good deal considering the features this is coming with. It's a solid all-rounder motherboard. I mean, it's missing a few things. You don't have the code readout, which would be nice. It's missing onboard buttons, which I know a lot of reviewers uh, like to have on there. Average users probably don't care that much about them. Maybe some people do. Uh, I, I think overall it's still good because it has those solid features there. 
I would definitely recommend it as a good all-rounder, but another thing to note is that you really need to check compatibility. These MSI boards tend to be a bit fussy, so make sure your, your uh, RAM and whatever, whatever else you're gonna run with it is compatible, because you definitely don't wanna have an issue of buying one of these and then have uh, incompati incompatibility issues with your RAM or anything like that. But aside from those issues, yeah, I would recommend this motherboard. I think it's a really solid all-rounder as far as the X370s go. Now, thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already, and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.